Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys the digitally digested segment for the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. So of course, this is my full review. I'm going to do my best to give you guys all of the pertinent information you need in order to decide whether or not this tablet is right for you. So first and foremost, let's start off with pricing and specifications. We're looking at the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi only version of this tablet in the white color. Also comes in a blue color, and you can pick it up in either a 16 or 32 gig capacity. Uh, both are Wi-Fi only tablets. Originally, they were priced at five and five fifty U.S. Now, because of the several months they've been on the market, you can find some reduced pricing. I know Best Buy is currently carrying them uh, for four fifty and five hundred dollars, respectively. So basically, a fifty dollar price drop across the board, no matter which uh, storage capacity you decide to go with. Do keep in mind that this does have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, so you aren't stuck with that fixed amount of storage out of the box. It runs ice cream sandwich out of the box. Jelly Bean has been promised. I mentioned this months ago when I first you know, had my uh, hands-on video as well as just unboxing time. We all knew that Jelly Bean was in the works because this is a very high-end tablet despite the fact that its screen resolution doesn't live up to much of the competition. So Jelly Bean, we're still waiting on. It also does bring quite a bit of new fe uh, features to this tablet, unlike many of the other models out there where Jelly Bean is an incremental upgrade and you have a vanilla Android experience and pretty much know what to expect. Samsung has built uh, the experience from the ground up and much of what you see right now on the Galaxy Note 2 is really the experience you're going to find here with uh, Jelly Bean once it does push from Samsung. So a long waiting period, unfortunately, that's kind of become Samsung's trademark. But now that they are a Nexus partner with the launch of the Nexus 10 last week, let's hope that things do really improve for them. But the one piece of good news about waiting for an update like this is that it is going to fundamentally change the way you use the Galaxy Note 10.1. So specifications, at that $450 price point we're looking at here, you get a 10.1 inch PLS display, 1280 by 800 resolution, really the standard still, even though we are trending towards higher resolution these days, still the standard for the platform. And really the display has very good color reproduction, but more importantly, pressure sensitivity because it is a Wacom tablet. Uh, the screen we're looking at here, pressure sensitive, Wacom was employed by Samsung to give you a thousand different levels of pressure sensitivity when using the S Pen. And as a result, it really does combine for, in my opinion, the best writing uh, productivity that you can get out of any tablet on the market. So do not compare this to a traditional stylus meeting any other capacitive tablet, whether it's an iPad or obviously an Android based tablet because the Galaxy Note redefines that market niche. With that said, uh, the screen overall, even though it doesn't have that extra added resolution, really is a pleasure to use. Uh, brightness, viewing angles, all top notch. Would I like to see a little more resolution? It certainly couldn't hurt, but if it did end up impeding uh, the productivity, and by that I mean lagging the entire OS, then it really wouldn't be a good trade-off. You could argue that Samsung intentionally went low res and either, either to cut costs or for the reason I just mentioned, overall performance. Either way, I don't think that it ends up taxing this device and really taking away from its overall appeal, especially as the price does continue to drop. And it's going to continue because newer and newer tablets are going to come out, just like the Nexus 10, which Samsung is responsible for, of course, in close cooperation with Google. So beyond the screen, uh, overall build quality is plastic, but still very good. You've got front-facing stereo speakers that really perform exceptionally well. Uh, the only other tablet on the market to date that has uh, I would say comparable speaker quality is the Nexus 10, and I really don't want to compare these even though they're very close in price because they are fundamentally different. So screen resolution and display quality, very good. It should be. Samsung is one of the largest screen makers in the world, forget largest manufacturers of consumer electronics, so high expectations pretty much met despite the resolution. The only time you're ever going to really notice any kind of drop off with the screen quality is when you're really reading text, blowing it up all the way. That's when you will start to experience experience some pixelation. Now as far as the processor, you're getting an Exynos quad-core chip, pretty much still top of the class right now, does outperform the Tegra 3 on many different benchmarks. Uh, you do 
however, as a result of not having an NVIDIA-based chip, you're going to lose out on some of those Tegra-optimized graphics. Not really a big deal in my opinion, unless gaming is your sole function for a tablet or makes up a very large portion of what you do with it, then you might want to consider sticking with a Tegra 3 based device. But otherwise, the Exynos quad-core chip that's under the hood here, clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, really does shine across all applications. Now, as far as memory, you're getting two gigs of RAM. And this tablet set that standard, which right now, as we can see, is becoming official. Whether it's looking at Microsoft Surface, where the, you know all the RT tablets out of the box have at least two gigs of RAM, or if we look at the Nexus 10 that just came out last week, you're again looking at a tablet that's packing two gigs of RAM. So clearly, this is a direction that wasn't just a trend, it is now a standard in my opinion, and it will only be a matter of time before the next generation of tablet hardware uh, from all manufacturers, not just Samsung, really do show two or maybe even more gigs of RAM at their very base models. Because whether it's necessary or not isn't what it's really about. It's really ensuring that the product has more lifespan than three to six months. And a gig now has been the standard for quite a while. So glad the Galaxy Note has that new standard. And that's part of the reason it's going to make it a real winner as that price continues to drop. So beyond processor, screen, and RAM, you've also got everything else you'd expect in terms of wireless functionality, in terms of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And I say that because the Wi-Fi, as you can see, you know, basically bouncing around right there, really has been fantastic on this tablet. The only tablet that it does not outdo in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity is the Nexus 10, and for good reason, frankly. The Nexus 10 just came out last week, whereas this tablet's been on the market for well over three months, so you're getting a different wireless chipset, but overall, this is hands down the best Wi-Fi experience in terms of keeping a connection, keeping a solid, strong connection, and really fast uh, browsing speeds and overall just all things relating to connectivity really working flawlessly this tablet outshines just about everything other than the Nexus 10 which makes sense uh, also because in theory this is a more expensive tablet than the Nexus 10 so when we do see a replacement for this do expect it to outperform the Nexus 10 because this is the flagship tablet for Samsung and Samsung really has become one of the best Android manufacturers in the marketplace so a lot of respect to Samsung for what they've done here really do enjoy using this tablet it works really well but moving away from Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, also you know there's no NFC here but you do get an infrared remote and that's a nice added value something that's only other found in the uh, Sony Xperia tablet and that one is a little bit more advanced if you're really looking for that specific feature that I'm gonna have to push you towards the Sony that I reviewed in the past but if you're again looking for the best overall tablet you're really looking at it here outside of the Nexus 10 and granted you know, something like the Transformer represents a different beast in terms of its functionality and what it's able to do, but just as a tablet out of the box, the Note 10.1 really does beat just about every other device on the market. Of course, again, with that exception of the Nexus 10. So, uh, we've gone over the specifications. I've talked to you guys about its place in the market. And a lot of you are probably saying, why hasn't he done more? We're looking at a static image. Well, let's get down to it. I'm going to take out the S Pen right now. And as I take the S Pen out, you can see it brings up a quick menu of different S Pen functions. Uh, whether you want to, you know, go straight to the S Note Pad, which is a piece of software that has been designed specifically for both the Note 10.1 as well as the Note series of phones, which will allow you to use your S Pen to pretty much write anything you want, draw anything you want, again, because this is a Wacom digitizer we're dealing with, which even though it says it has over 1,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, I can't say that I concur on that. Then again, how many of them are actually visible to the human eye? I don't know. But all of the included software really speaks to how complete this tablet is out of the box, even running ice cream sandwich. So really like that they've included Photoshop Touch, which if you're into photography or just looking for a way to edit your pictures, you're going to be glad that this application is included. I'm pretty sure it's either $15 or $20 right now through the Google Play Store. So a nice added value for those of you who aren't using it. Not going to be as big a deal. Polaris Office, pretty much a standard. This is going to allow you to use uh, this tablet, again, in a very function-oriented manner. Uh, by the way, this is the perfect device, in my opinion, for educational uh, purposes. So whether you're a student, whether that's undergrad, grad, PhD, whatever it may be, a law student, you're looking at a really great companion to replace your laptop. And that's something that most tablets can't do. Granted, the Transformer does have a keyboard dock. It really cannot work in the terms of multitasking that the Note can. 
And I'm going to show you guys that. But before I do that, I want to show you another quick launch menu down here at the base. You can see that little arrow. And that brings up uh, some quick applications which do allow multitasking. So we've got an alarm, calculator, email, music player, S note, S planner, and task manager. And by tapping any of these, you can bring them up simultaneously. So if I bring up email, which right now this is not configured because I did just do a complete uh, reformatting of this device for the review, so you guys get, uh, you know, basically as good performance as you possibly could see, you can already see that I'm pulling up these applications, and this is just a very simple, rudimentary example of how you can really leverage uh, multitasking on this device unlike any other. Now granted, there are applications that you can get in the Google Play Store, or across, I should just say, the marketplace in general, that will allow you to multitask in a similar uh, you know, fashion, such as Overscreen, where you'll get a web browser and it'll, you know, float and allow you to resize it. But this is the only uh, tablet out of the box and really only way so far to my, as far as my knowledge is concerned, that you're able to pull up and multitask using different applications. Granted, these are all made by Samsung, but the concept of being able to have your uh, schedule in front of you, email, as well as a notepad, so that you can simultaneously do whatever you need to in terms of taking notes, uh, you know, making appointments. This is something that no other tablet on the market can do. And even though it may seem like something really simple, trust me, when you don't have the ability to do this, it seems complicated because you wonder why can't the tablet do this? Because this is something really out of the gate that we should have expected from somebody like Apple, forget about Android, and Samsung is the only manufacturer to have uh, implemented this through their own build of TouchWiz, the overlay that runs over this ice cream sandwich build that is utilized. So, really do like this feature. I think it's highly underrated, and the idea that you can flip so seamlessly back and forth to information all on one screen is tremendously overlooked. I think this is a critical reason to why so many Galaxy Note owners are very happy. You can also do this with video, a web browser. I mean, it really does reach out, but this is the quick launch list of what you can get access to immediately. And again, no limitation to how many of these you can have on screen at once. The only limitation, obviously, is that each time you touch on one, it basically pulls your presence to that um, application that you've basically gestured, or in this case, touched with the S Pen. Now, this brings up another good thing I want to point out to you guys, which is just speaking again to the polish that this tablet really has. So keyboards, another really overlooked feature of most tablets. Uh, Android tablets do have the ability, as we all know, and some of us don't, to customize t uh, the actual keyboard experience, something that iOS has absolutely no answer for. And one of the things I really like about the Galaxy Note 10.1 out of the box is that Samsung knows no one keyboard is right for every single user. So what they've done first and foremost is told us exactly, again speaking to the polish, how to control the keyboard, how to change it. So right here they're telling you you can change the keyboard by pinching uh, or excuse me, pinching close on the keyboard area, and that'll change the different keyboard types. And that'll split it not only from a traditional keyboard like we see right now, but to a split screen keyboard as well as a floating keyboard. They also then tell us that to move the keyboard, all we have to do is tap two fingers down and hold them on the keyboard and drag it around. So really like that Samsung is giving you these notes, telling you how this OS works. And when I say the OS, granted, this is what Samsung has made for the tablet, but still, Trust me, you will not find another manufacturer that does this sort of uh, hand-holding. And it's critical, whether you're an average user or an advanced user, the fact of the matter remains that out of the box, you're not going to know how to use TouchWiz necessarily, especially if it's your first time using it. And Samsung has made sure that you won't be left scratching your head. So I really like that they do this. Of course, you can hit that to get rid of it so it doesn't appear again. They also tell you that you can enter text by sliding your finger, much like we find with Swipe, something that Samsung used to employ all the time. That's why it's here as well. And I just really like that Samsung has this attention to detail, something no other manufacturer on the marketplace uh, really takes advantage of. So basically, again, it was a double tap to move the keyboard, I believe. Uh, that's what I thought, but it's not employing right now, and that's because only because I have the text uh, field input going, but trust me, it does work relatively seamlessly, and uh, the split keyboard is my favorite, but again, because I've reset this, we have the general keyboard, but even something as simple as adding the number row there. I mean, granted, you can purchase all different keyboards. Uh, I personally am a fan of SwiftKey. I have both uh, the tablet version as well as uh, you know, the traditional uh, handset version. But when it comes to tablets, the fact that Samsung has made a tablet that you don't need to really spend any more money on things you shouldn't need to, 
I give them a lot of credit. So keyboard is one of them, and whether you're using this version or either of the other two, granted I do not use the floated one too much, the floating one too much, Samsung has done a really, really good job on the keyboard for this tablet, and that is critical to the whole experience. Forget that you do have this pressure-sensitive S Pen, you really do need a great keyboard, and that's something that's missing from too many of these devices. So let's move away from the keyboard, but I did want to point that out because it is part of the, the whole polish of the experience. Let's close out these applications, which of course, again, you can move, uh, as well as dock, save quickly like that. And I just wanted you guys to be aware that was from saving it. It took us straight into the memo feature. So basically, this is a larger version of the memo, you know, before we had a quick version uh, that we were able to just pull up from that quick dock at the bottom. And really, this is a very full featured application. I want to show you guys the actual part of the tutorial because it really shows you exactly what you need to know. So right here you can see Galaxy Note 10.1 and then it tells you it's got templates for business, education, ideas, and lifestyle. And you might be saying to yourself, why would I need all of those things? Well, that's because Samsung has made sure that this isn't really just a gimmick. It's about actually getting use out of this pen and really making it a regular part of your routine when using your tablet. So for those of you out there that don't have interest in the pen, this isn't going to really appeal. It might open some eyes uh, to those of you who don't know what you could really do with this. But if you are interested in a pen experience, then the S Pen hands down destroys everything else that even attempts to give you a stylus. So let's start off with just looking at some of their examples. So they give us, you know, travel plans, fashion, future plans. If we just look at travel, you can see an example of what they have here, just showing you how you can draw anything you like. Granted, this is more of a gimmick than an actual feature, but it's still there, and that's what's relevant. And they're giving you these templates so you get an idea, because I think most people's minds really aren't open to how they could incorporate a pen. So whether you're into design, doodling, drawing, you're an artist, or if you're just a regular user, they're trying to show you there's something for everyone when it comes to the S Pen. It really is not just about being an artist. It's also about practicality. Uh, education, as I mentioned earlier, is really my big hook for the Galaxy Note 10.1 because that's where I think the Galaxy Note outshines everybody else. Because if you're looking to have a companion for work, specifically work that has to do with education, ease of access with getting books, annotation, uh, all types of highlighting, copy and pasting, pulling information out of documents, that's where the Note 10.1 makes everything else look like it's from another generation. Uh, as you've noticed with all of the uh, S Memo uh, functionality, we have a preview here in the left corner. Uh, nothing new. It just gives you an idea of where you are on the page. Works nicely. If you have a multi-page document, it will simulate page turning. You know, a little graphic to make you happy, I suppose. But overall, this works flawlessly. And that's what I have to point out because that's what's so critical uh, to really making a product that not only looks great, but also works really well. And I think at the end of the day, that's what everyone out there is looking for. If you're going to invest $450 now into this tablet, or even $500 for the 32 gig capacity, you want to make sure that you're getting a device that isn't all talk. And that's where the Galaxy Note really shines. Yes, it doesn't have that high resolution display that a lot of the competition has, whether it's the Infinity, the Nexus 10, or the iPad, uh, but it really does shine on every other element. Even the cameras, which I didn't mention yet, uh, the front and rear cameras, two megapixels up there on the front, five on the back, really do a very nice job. Are they the best cameras I've seen on a tablet to date? No, but they certainly are some of the best. So Samsung has made sure that every element of this tablet really would be top notch. And it is the flagship, so it should be without question. Now, I wanted to show you guys some of the instructions that they prompt here. They're not seeming to come up, but again, all just templates to show you the different uh, uses, like I said before, uh, you know, I want to show you guys, I actually just closed that, but within education, sh showing you that you could have physics, mathematics, engineering, economics, whatever it may be, there's a different way that you can leverage the S Pen experience in order to use it. So in this case, we've got traditional text being accompanied by a sketch diagram in order to demonstrate, you know, what's going on here in terms of the physics equation. And this is just a very minimal, you know, very standardized example, but the sky's the limit when it comes to this stuff because it really gives you the ability to put everything on one page. So I've shown this to you guys already. Don't want to, you know, keep showing you the same thing. Even if something as simple as putting down ideas, like I showed you guys before, business applications, again, really anything you could possibly need to do, whether it's just general information, 
The whole idea here is you're no longer facing the traditional limitations that you would have with a device like this or any other tablet. And the key part to making this a unique and functional product is really answering how well a product or how well the transformer line has been received. You know, if you're Samsung and you're looking at how well Asus has done with the transformer line and that no one has matched it, you really had to come up with a device that was groundbreaking in a different way. And that's exactly what the S Pen represents because it redefines the way we look at the stylus. You know, traditionally the stylus really was a blah device. Granted, a lot of us out there did need it and it is essential in terms of the way we would uh, interact with a device like this. No one had really built software from the ground up or partnered with a digitizing company like Wacom uh, to really make a product this polished. So, that's where the S Memo feature and function is going to really shine. You also have the ability to multi screen, which I did demo uh, previously. And multi screen will allow you basically to either side by side the S Memo that we have here, this software, with either an internet browser, video player, Polaris Office, your picture gallery, or even email. Now, while it is limited to those activities now, that list will expand with the Jelly Bean update. So many things are going to be improved upon. I really can't even begin to touch on it and it's going to be a different device. Just go ahead and take a look at some Galaxy Note 2 reviews and then you'll know exactly what the Jelly Bean experience is going to be like here and Jelly Bean should come any day now. I mean it's slated for Q4 of this year. We're in Q4 so Samsung knows they've got to get it out there especially since the Nexus 10 obviously is running the latest version of the OS so this flagship that really is fundamentally more expensive because of its original price point has to be upgraded, I have to imagine, shortly, especially since uh, they are working with Jelly Bean over in uh, Samsung's labs. It's not like they haven't been, both on mobile handsets as well as tablets. And really, the idea of Jelly Bean is that uh, unifying platform. So any day now, I would expect it. But let's go ahead and jump out of this. I did want to show you guys the extent of specific direction that they give. Let me see if I can do that, because... Uh, I'll just remove all applications that are open because that's really where Samsung, yeah, here we go, uh, learn about the application. So right out of the box, again, you're being greeted by an informational piece of literature. If you don't like to read, you know, you're going to lose out, obviously. But this is really telling you exactly everything you need to know about using S Memo. So the productivity tools really are going to be just across the top. I'll show you guys that in a second. But then above and beyond that, formula matching, even matching of shapes. So, you know, if you're not the best artist, this tablet's going to pick up the slack. Handwriting to text, another thing a lot of you are going to enjoy using, and it is accurate. I've used it. Great. You know, it's not a perfect solution, but for those of you who are looking to transcribe, the tablet can handle it. And that's going to be really important to a lot of you guys to have natively, especially if the idea is to use this pen. Uh, zooming in and out, pinching to zoom, nothing new there. Uh, just explaining the toolbar, knowledge searches, telling you how you can leverage the application. These are critical things. And then how to save things. Uh, telling you about multi-screen, the view mode. They're just, they're telling you every single item that you need to understand so that you're not caught having to guess what these things do when you actually get in to the application. Even, you know, record your sketching, showing in, uh, show high toolbar. They're giving you a description of every single thing. So again, hand-holding that, in my opinion, isn't necessary, but is beyond more than welcomed, whether you're a regular everyday user or a power user. So again, let me just open up that memo show you guys some of those features because that's what we were getting down to. I'm going to switch hands and just went into the handwriting mode so that we can actually use the pen and as you can see we've also got the eraser there as well as um, you know your text settings so you can pick your font uh, as well as really customize just the whole experience so really overall really nice and as you guys have seen in the past when I have done I made a mistake there but when I have done examples of the performance of this. You can see if I start out really light, you know, and then go thick, it does, or rather press, it does get thicker, no question about it. But in order to really determine that there are a thousand levels there, like I said, 995 of them must be not visible to the human eye. Uh, again, it also may relate to which actual uh, pen you're using, which tool I should say. Uh, because that's going to also determine the thickness of what you're writing. But in terms of pressure sensitivity, you know, this is as hard as I'm going to press. This is 
just about as light as I'm going to press. And you can see there is a difference, although it may be mild. Uh, you've got your recording capability right up there. Uh, you're saving, as I just showed you guys before, the multi-screen. If we hit the menu button, you get a whole host of different settings here, essentially, you know, whether you want to export. By the way, you can export whatever notes you have here as either a uh, image file or a PDF, which is really handy, especially, again, if you're taking notes for work or anything like that. You're getting standard formats in order to keep this saved and share it with your coworkers, uh, colleagues, whatever it may be. So really nice standard software, like that they've thought of just about everything. Keep in mind, when, mind that when you're using the multi-screen function, you will only be able to split screen it, uh, you know, two applications at once. That is the limitation. You're not gonna be able to do three or four. After all, 10.1 inches of screen real estate here really doesn't afford that much room. In fact, I think a lot of users out there probably say to themselves, why would I even want a multi uh, task on a 10.1 inch display, but I've already shown you guys right at the very beginning why it's useful with simple things like the quick applications that are right here docked at the bottom, whether it's having a media player up, being able to change the song you're uh, listening to or changing uh, the video you're watching, and at the same time being able to get quick access to all the core functionality you'd expect from a mobile computing experience. Let me go ahead and hide that. And really, I have to emphasize, zero lag with this tablet. Uh, you can look at benchmarks, you can look at everything out there and try to weigh in and see where it lies with the competition. You will find that there are very few tablets that can stand up to this uh, overall. Granted, the Transformer Infinity, very close with that 1.6 uh, gigahertz uh, quad-core uh, quad Tegra 3, which all of you who follow my channel know I love its reference hardware. The fact of the matter is the Exynos chipset is just younger, so it performs better. Like most things that are brand new, granted this isn't any more since it's over three months old, it still has to outperform most of the Tegra 3 chips out there. But as I mentioned before, you will have that extra added graphics support with the Tegra 3. Even though this has a more complex graphics chipset, not optimized to function with Tegra 3 gaming. So you can't get those, you know, those little extra graphical enhancements that you will get out of a Tegra 3 based experience. So let's talk about other software. I mentioned the Photoshop Touch, really nice. Smart Remote Peel software, let's talk about that. Um, I have used it, obviously, through the course of my ownership, and it works really well. Uh, I'm not going to give you guys a full demo here, but I'm going to just show you the basic idea of what it does, and right there is really what it does. I mean, you're seeing the picture right here. It's going to give you a, a remote control as well as a visual guide of what's on television so that you can quickly jump to that program or movie. The thing here is, is that this infrared system, nowhere near as complex as the Sony Xperia. That one really affords, in my opinion, best-in-class performance because it does actually incorporate uh, you know, far much more than this device does with the Peel software. You have macros and the ability to program them, really turn that into the equivalency of the older uh, Logitech touchscreen controllers that, you know, were three and a half inch touchscreens, the 1100, those sorts of models that were three, four hundred dollar remotes on their own. So that's something where the Sony does outshine the Samsung. Since both of them are very large consumer electronics manufacturers, it doesn't surprise me that they've added these features because they're looking for another way to differentiate themselves. And infrared remote controls certainly are something that I think we will come to expect from these sort of devices because I've always asked myself why they aren't there to begin with. Uh, something, you know, back in the day when I was, it wasn't that long ago, several years ago at this point, uh, working with the first Arcos uh, Android-based tablets, I was using Logitech, you know, remote applications in order to use the tablets as remote controls. You guys can go ahead into my uh, upload history and see that old video, which got a, quite a bit of traffic because I couldn't understand how no one had thought of this and why it wasn't being integrated. And well, now we have it. So. It works not as nice as what you'll find uh, with the Sony Xperia, but then, then again, the Sony Xperia was pulled off the market because of waterproofing issues. If you're wondering why it vanished since I did my review, that is the reason. But it is back out there, so if you are really interested in the infrared feature, do keep that in mind. The Sony will outperform it on that front, but otherwise, you're getting a better tablet here, especially if you're interested in the pen capability. But I have to say the smart remote is really a great feature, another added value besides the overall value of TouchWiz, which I never thought I'd be saying, folks. TouchWiz 
It does not have a history of being a value-added feature, but at least on the Galaxy Note platform, it really does add quite a bit. So uh, all that hand-holding is great. The software lineup is very nice. Sans Samsung's own application so uh, store there, not really necessary, but they're doing that because you do have a pen that makes this tablet unique. Again, a bit of differentiation to show you that there are quite a, di a different number of apps that can leverage the S Pen experience, something you will not get from any other manufacturer. Manufacturer. So if I go ahead and just pick the US and show you guys, let's go ahead and accept this, see if it loads up, and basically it'll just be, you know, their app store showing you a host of applications optimized for the Galaxy Note 10.1. Uh, while this is loading, I want to point out uh, battery life. You're looking at somewhere, uh, apparently uh, it crashed. So perfect for you guys, as I'm saying that it's a lag free tablet. Apparently that at least did just crash. Let's try opening it again. Thankfully, this is not an application that any of us are depending on for anything, but there we go, it's open. And you guys can see basically their own app store just trying to point you towards applications that are really optimized uh, in their opinion for the note. Uh, not all of the applications are, but some of them are, and that's what makes it uh, relevant to your experience here with the Note 10.1. Let me go and back out of this and uh, show you guys some other things here. Uh, in terms of further software, I've mentioned the Photoshop Touch multiple times. I'm not going to demo it because that could be a video all on its own, but really it does work very nicely. In terms of software, this is literally how it will look out of the box. Uh, Dropbox is pre-installed, as you can see. Uh, 50 gigs for free for two years of storage, uh, which is a nice added bonus. Uh, but other than that, pretty much standard fare in terms of what we've come to see from tablets. You know, they do have their own file browser. Uh, the actual internet browser that's stock does still have Flash, something that is disappearing on newer tablets like the Nexus 10. Obviously, the Nexus 7 was the first Google tablet to exclude Flash, and Flash has uh, stopped uh, being supported. Nonetheless, it is still available to sideload. So even when this does go to Jelly Bean, you'll still be able to have a Flash experience. You don't need to worry whether or not that Flash experience will still be in the stock browser. I'm not sure, can't tell you guys, but you will be able to use other third-party browsers like Boat Browser uh, as well as Dolphin and still have a Flash experience. I know this because even the Nexus 10 is still able to run a Flash experience in third-party browsers like Dolphin. So. Don't worry about losing Flash. Uh, the photo gallery is standard. Their game hub, not going to really touch on. Or their music hub or music player, because these are proprietary pieces of software that don't blow me away. Uh, it's the balance of the software that I've covered thus far that's really very interesting. Out of the box, you do get uh, the Nook app installed for e-reading. Obviously, if you want to use the Kindle app, go for it. It's just a matter of Samsung's positioning, because they are a conglom. They've got a lot of money to throw around, a lot of partnerships to be had. Samsung knows this, and this is a flagship. I can't remind you guys enough. Um, but everything we see here, pretty much standard fare. What I also like is that, you know, if you do use the Galaxy uh, line of phones, whether it's the Samsung Galaxy S2 or 3, whichever it may be, since those are still probably the two most popular phones on the market right now, in my opinion, when it comes to Samsung build, obviously, uh, you're going to feel very familiar and at home with this. Not that you wouldn't as a regular Android user, but this is the same exact TouchWiz interface that you will experience on any other Samsung device for the most part, specifically the two I just mentioned, really the Samsung Galaxy S3 as well as Note. You're looking at a mirror image of it. That's why I said go ahead and look at the Note 2 uh, Jelly Bean reviews in order to see exactly what the experience will be like here with the S Pen. But Really like that they've been smart enough to give us quick access to everything we need access to. Uh, speaking of which, GPS, which I'm going to turn off, it was automatically turned on in the refresh of this unit, really does work very, very well. No uh, you know, latency with locking, very quick, one of the fastest to perform I've seen on any tablet so far. And of course that is with Wi-Fi off, no internet needed. Uh, if you're doing navigation, then internet is still uh, needed, uh, like with any other tablet for the most part, unless you're going to pre-download uh, your routes and your map areas, of course you can go that route. Uh, but very quick access, which is a very good thing. Power saving I have used quite a bit, and it does work very well. Uh, so battery life I mentioned before, you're looking at between 8 and 10 hours. If you really push the tablet and you know keep the brightness all the way down, which if we notch it down, you can see it does get pretty dark, then you really can squeak out quite a bit more battery life. But if you're thinking that you're going to go full power on everything, then expect, like I said, around eight to nine at best. If you're going to you know, pull everything down, 
bring that brightness down, which obviously is the biggest drain on the battery out of the box, then you're going to do even better. You know, 10 hours plus sky, I'm not going to say is the limit, but Samsung has put a really big battery on here and they know that battery life is critical to every tablet. So really the point I'm making is Samsung didn't cut any corner that would make you say, how could they have done this? Except for some of you, the screen, which I have to reiterate, really, you're going to be very hard pressed to see a resolution difference unless you really, really look for it. Because uh, outside of, like I mentioned earlier, reading text, you're going to be uh, really challenged to tell me or anyone else for that matter that the resolution on new tablets like the Nexus 10, iPad, or Transformer Infinity really do blow this away because they don't. Uh, QC is another thing to take into account. The quality control, the build of this tablet, Samsung has done a very nice job. Uh, really no backlight bleed to speak of. Granted, it is a PLS display, but that still does not mean that it, you know, should or rather could not have backlight bleed, but it doesn't. Uh, everything just works as it should. Really haven't had any QC issues, no real flex in the back of the tablet, uh, but it is plastic, so it's not metal, so there's gonna be a little more give than you'd have with a metal build. Front-facing speakers, as I mentioned before, really best in class, and overall, the build is just sound. There's nothing, you know, the buttons up top, the volume rocker, power button, all tactile, feel good, don't make you, you know, you're not searching for them. Everything was just made well by Samsung. This is manufactured in Korea. I also do want to point that out, not that I'm biased towards uh, it being manufactured in any specific region, but for those of you who are curious, this way you know. Now, if I jump into settings, I wanted to also show you guys, again, we have a skin here. This is all about, as I mentioned before, the um, TouchWiz environment, and Samsung really has built that from the ground up for you. And, you know, in the actual settings itself, that doesn't necessarily come through, but overall, as I think you guys can see from the experience, it's just completely foreign to what you traditionally expect from an ice cream sandwich build. This just doesn't look like anything else, except for our familiar uh, buttons and notification that we have on the left and right side, and of course, our uh, launcher right here for applications. Those things fairly standard, but everything else pretty much looks different. So wanted to just make sure you guys were aware of that. Uh, if you get rid of these things that Samsung stock throws on there, it's only going to make the experience more lean. I cannot imagine how well or you know how fast this tablet would really perform if it was a vanilla experience because the Exynos just it does so well under the TouchWiz environment. I, you know, we're only going to see an improvement with Jelly Bean, uh, and that's frankly why I think Samsung was chosen as the uh, Nexus 10 partner. Because if this tablet can perform so well, imagine what a stock Jelly Bean tablet is going to run like, built around very similar internals with an even better screen. And that's the exact approach that the Nexus 10 takes. Uh, as far as other features, you guys should be aware of. There aren't really a whole host to really cover. I think, you know, because I'm, I've taken you guys through 30 plus minutes of discussing what this tablet is capable of, you should have a very good idea now, not only about whether or not the low res screen is a deal breaker, because if it, you know, if you're interested in the S Pen and what it brings to the table, then the low res screen should not inhibit you in any way from picking one of these up, especially at a sale price. I've told you camera functionality is great, Bluetooth not broken in any way. So a lot of the problems that you have with other tablets, whether, you know, I'm not gonna name names, but, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who've experienced Bluetooth and Wi-Fi problems, you're just not going to have them here. GPS also works great. And the only real downside to owning this tablet is that Jelly Bean has not hit it yet. I think that will be outweighed by all of the features that Jelly Bean will bring to the table. So those of you who've been waiting patiently and own one of these, don't fret. You're going to get Jelly Bean. If you haven't already installed the leak, you know, don't, because Jelly Bean is eminent. Uh, when I did my hands-on three months ago, I thought Jelly Bean was going to be sooner than now, but when you think about it, three months is probably about right. Uh, the only downside is that Jelly Bean's been out for a while, but do keep in mind the only other tablet running Jelly Bean right now natively is the Nexus 10. Uh, the Transformer has been upgraded. I'm talking about natively out of the box. So you got to keep that in mind. Asus may have been quicker, but when you talk about hardware and overall quality of experience, my vote has to go towards the Galaxy Note 10.1 if you're comparing this uh, directly with the Transformer Infinity. And that makes sense since they both came out 
in the same quarter. Both sported very similar price points. Not as easy to compare this with the Nexus 10. Obviously, I'm going to have to give the nod to the Nexus 10 unless you're looking for the S Pen. Uh, if you're looking for S Pen functionality, then the Nexus 10 really shouldn't even be on your shortlist. This is the only tablet you should be looking at, frankly, if you're looking for pen functionality. And again, this is all about the identity of a tablet. Samsung's answer, in my opinion, to what Asus has created because that little niche that they created turned into a big one with the Transformer. And that's part of why Asus became a Nexus partner with the Nexus 7. Now, because Samsung has been so successful with both the Galaxy Note 10.1 being one of, in my opinion, the most flawless tablets to hit the market, uh, but also their overall build quality, ability to actually fill orders, get things out to the marketplace in a timely fashion, Maybe not so much on the software side, but that's where the Nexus program will hopefully help Samsung. Uh, that's why Samsung was a logical next partner, much like the selection of Asus for the 10 inch tablet. They've got the best 10 inch Android tablet on the market in my opinion. That's why they were selected as the partner. Having all of those manufacturing capabilities as well as budgeting certainly doesn't help, uh, in, uh, or rather hurt, uh, you know, the selection process. So really like everything that this tablet represents, still can wholeheartedly recommend it, even with the Nexus 10 being out, and reduced pricing, I want to point out, with the Transformer line, because all of them have gone down in price. Don't think I'm leaving that out. It just comes down to that the QC issues as well as some of the bugs associated with the Transformer end up leading me towards recommending this over it, unless you must have that uh, 1080p IPS display. I should really say 1200p IPS plus display. If you must have that resolution, then you really should be looking at the Transformer or the Nexus 10. If you have to have a keyboard and extra battery life and really almost full functionality of a computer, then you know the Transformer is still going to reign supreme over all other tablets. But if you're just looking for mobile computing, great battery life, and of course the pen functionality, this is a no-brainer. Uh, the Nexus 10, on the other hand, as long as you're willing to forego the pen, it really does offer the best tablet experience on the market right now, in my opinion. Granted, some sacrifices have been made because it's a Nexus device, and that's why I tend to not want to compare it to this, because anything that's not a Nexus device really is aimed at a completely different user uh, or group of consumers, and that includes this device. Uh, this is not like a Nexus. It has expandable storage. It doesn't have HDMI out, something that the Nexus Nexus does now incorporate, so you know one strike to the uh, Galaxy Note on that. But really beyond that, that's the biggest gripe I could possibly have with it. I'm not a big fan of having to buy extra connectors, and the Galaxy Note 10.1 does force you to buy some proprietary uh, accessories in order to get things like video out, as well as let's say a full-size SD card reader. You know you may need, you're going to have to pick up uh, some sort of uh, extra accessories if you really want to do more than what you're able to out of the box. That's something that with, you know, the Nexus 10 also pushes you down that road, but not as much because you do have a regular micro USB cable for charging, also on the go support. So for peripherals, that's something where here you are a little bit more limited. But the fact that you've got a pen really is an attempt to render all of those extra accessories useless. So I understand where they were going, the idea, the concept. It makes sense. And as I mentioned, because everything works so well, I don't have a lot to critique outside of those proprietary accessories costing more money and really just being something that I would have liked to have seen on the tablet. Since that's not Samsung's approach, that's why they're not there. Uh, the Transformer Infinity, or any of the Transformers I should say, also don't have everything, but they certainly do have uh, you know, storage expansion as well as HDMI out. In terms of USB peripherals, getting full-size USB ports and SD card reader, meaning full-size, not micro, you are going to have to pick up the keyboard dock. So you can really make the peripheral argument for either of those tablets, this or the Transformer, that you're going to have to shell out more money to really get the full functionality, but obviously more so with the Transformer because the accessories are pricier in that keyboard. Even though I do find a lot of value in it since you're getting not just the features I mentioned, which is a full-size SD card slot uh, for storage expansion, USB ports for peripherals, but also uh, obviously a keyboard that gives you an additional, almost doubles your battery life. So a lot going on there for the extra money you're going to spend. Not as much going on here, but really the idea is that Samsung feels they've given you a complete product, no reason to uh, give you a keyboard, I guess. I wouldn't be shocked though down the road if the Galaxy Note ends up with some sort of converter keyboard uh, experience so that it does really rival the Transformer in every single way, uh, not just performance and quality control. Uh, but overall, really like what Samsung's done here. I do think that's the reason they found themselves uh, the partner for the Nexus 10. 
Google wants the best people involved that they can possibly have. And right now, not only from a hardware standpoint, since the Exynos chip that runs this entire experience is manufactured and designed by Samsung, but also the TouchWiz environment, as I've been bragging about through the course of this review, is just so good. I think Google had to look at this and say, we got to get them on our team, not just because of sales numbers, but because this is one of the few companies you know, Samsung is really investing a lot in Android, and for good reason. We all know what happened with Apple uh, this past year, the lawsuit, uh, the eventual uh, decision for a billion dollars. So it makes a lot of sense to see this partnership taken to the next level with the Nexus 10. If you're not looking for a Nexus experience, if you're not looking for a transformer, if you really do care about a stylus, your ability to be able to take handwritten notes, have them tra transcribe, have the ability to multitask quickly and have everything in one place, that's what the Galaxy Note 10.1 is going to give you. And just, you know, the simple things like web browsing, performance is just top notch. And I know I've shown this in the past, uh, and this will be the last thing I show you guys. It's just great. There's no slowdown here. And even if I just do a regular search and it pulls up in Gadget, I am nowhere near my router. I know I said this three months ago when I had my first hands on, and that stays true. And it's just a lag free browsing experience. You can see the page just about finished loading up already, but it didn't hinder us or prevent us from starting to browse content. Uh, but I'll let it finish up loading. And you'll just see, and right now, even if I do a little pinch to zoom action, it, it did have a hiccup there because it is finishing the load process. Uh, but it's really as fluid as it gets on a tablet other than the Nexus 10. So if you're going to compare this to the Transformer Infinity, there's no question in my opinion that this does outperform it in every benchmark other than obviously the keyboard functionality as well as uh, software updates. That's where Asus right now is beating Samsung, but I expect that to change. Not across the board for Samsung, but at least on this tablet we will see Jelly Bean soon. As far as what updates will follow, can't really tell you guys. Don't know how far the legacy of this device will be, because I do expect there to be a Samsung Galaxy Note 10.12, even though that may not be the name. I do expect after seeing the Nexus 10 and using it and knowing how good an experience it provides, I expect something similar to carry on the Note lineage. So web browsing really solid uh, and the speaker quality as I've mentioned throughout the course of this review is stellar flash performance absolutely no hiccups in fact it pretty much performs uh, without any buffering whatsoever whether you're on you know YouTube uh, pick whichever news media outlet you want to browse to to get video I was going to take you guys to one now I could pull up CNN for a moment but the idea is you know the same it really just performs well no issues and love the keyboard out of the box. There are so many good things to say about the experience that Samsung has put together here. So I have no problem recommending this at the $450 price point. I think it's probably going to go even lower. I know there have been some pricing errors out there, and some of you have been able to score this at the $350 price point. Very lucky, but that wasn't a real price match, unfortunately, uh, for the rest of us out there. And again, just to give you guys an example, the multi-screen, because I didn't do it before, they even tell you how to select back and forth the applications, close it out. Again, just identifying all the buttons so you're not scratching your head. And they also tell you how to drag and drop within the multi-screen. All very useful things. And as you can see, that little blue line down there on the bottom indicates which window's active. So when we're here, that's active. Obviously, when we switch over to the web browser, as soon as that blue line appears, you can move. And there are no problems. And yes, I know that there are things like overscreen out there, but you cannot argue that overscreen is a replacement for what Samsung has put together with the Galaxy Note 10.1. So really like everything that this package has to offer. Uh, as I mentioned, build quality solid, price point, you know, you're getting what you pay for. That's really my best way of putting this. The proprietary charging port, not in love with, but that's a small gripe. Microphones work well. Uh, all the video chatting I've done on this has been received extraordinarily well. In fact, most people thought I was on a computer, um, which can be said for, said for a lot of new Android tablets, but this has one of the better configurations out there in terms of hardware, and that's one of the reasons it fares well. Uh, the back, in terms of the plastic finish I mentioned before, there's a little more flex than you'd get from the metal-backed com uh, competition, but the wireless capabilities, I think, just blow everything away. And if that's a product of being in a plastic build rather than a metal, I think any of us will take that trade-off any day of the week. And for those of you out there that aren't willing to make that trade-off, you have the option, obviously, to pick up a tablet with a metal back. This is, uh, you know, an option you have. So uh, you're not confined to have to pick Samsung's plastic build, but I'm telling you in advance, you're going to get better performance. And at the end of the day, performance performance is really what should trump all other things. Um, as I mentioned, power button, volume rocker, all tactile. 
nice that they keep that micro SD card slot covered. Not every manufacturer does this, and as a result, it does allow uh, dust into the body. Uh, that IR port for all of that uh, smart remote goodness I was talking about before, as well as your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack port. And the cameras really do just work, which is what I expect from a tablet at this price point. But overall, really like the Galaxy Note 10.1. Can wholeheartedly recommend it to all of you out there, especially uh, students, anyone who's looking, again, to take those handwritten notes, because this is where Samsung has really defined themselves with this product. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.